G'day folks, in today's video we're moving this grow bed down to the new aquaponic system and hooking her up. So before I give you a look at the, uh, where I'm up to on the other system, I thought I'd just bring you up to speed on this bed. This is something we purchased second hand off Danny when he was downsizing, thank you very much mate. It's a gal frame with a 400-ish litre grow bed in it and there's also a space down the bottom where we could put a second grow bed. He used that as a sump and then had the grow bed on top. He actually had three of these set up from memory. Now what I need to do is uh, basically get all the media out of here and move it down into the bed. So it'll have to sit in another tank while I um, sort out the moving of the stand and the grow bed. But anyway, a uh, quick update on what I've done down the bottom. So you might remember the other day the water in the sump tank looked like chocolate milk. Well, I'm happy to say she is cleaned up nicely. Now there is a lot of uh, solids down on the bottom there. So what I'm going to try and do is just remove those solids after I get the other clay down here in the other beds, uh, just so, you know, we can collect any other solids that just want to randomly flow through the system. And then probably use a vacuum attachment of some sort just to try and clean the bottom off the best I can. Uh, the other thing I can do is just stir it up and let it run through the system with only the grow beds on and a lot of those solids will be deposited out in the media in the grow beds. And because they're very fine, very small, they won't pose an issue going anaerobic or anything like that. I'm not too concerned. On top of here, I have placed in a grow bed. Now I was talking originally about popping in a, a, a raft bed or deep water culture bed on top of the fish tank, uh, of the sump tank, sorry. But because we're so up in the air at the moment with them buying a property and possibly moving, fingers crossed they accept our finance. Um, yeah, I really just want to pop the clay in there, make sure there's enough biofiltration, pop the fish in there and just make it as hassle free as I can for now. And then later when we move to the farm, I'll create deep water culture beds there just to give you a bit of a look at my take on them. Quick look at this grow bed. It is basically the same grow bed that was on top of the sump tank. The only difference is I've wired it on slightly differently meaning I had to um, level it out because the sump tank is on a bit of a uh, backward slope. So I just popped a paver in there and she's fa fairly level and also wired it on nicely. So yeah, not coming off here at all. As for the drain, typical bell siphon arrangement. It's the same one that was in the bed up the top. I just need to pop a standpipe in there. I haven't cladded the outside, but fingers crossed it won't be here long enough to create an algae issue on there. Uh, because I'd really like to move very soon, as soon as settlement happens, if settlement happens. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much what where we're up to with that one. For the move itself, I'm looking at putting the media bed just here, uh, just with that milk crate and sleepers I used as a cedar, and then there's going to be a little bit of a walkway in between. I was going to have two NFT rails coming out this way, but I'm not going to worry about that again because of the move. I just want to keep this build as um, simple as I can. So we'll just stick with two media flood and drain beds and the one dual root zone over the back. So that's enough of an update. Before we take the plants out, I want to make sure that I've got enough water in this bed so I can clean the media because I don't want a repeat of what happened with the last grow bed from over the sump tank. Uh, the easiest way to clean the media is basically to flood the bed and then you can give it a bit of a swish around. So what I like to do is just pop in a section of pipe into the standpipe and that will slowly, I can actually increase the flow. What that's going to do is basically raise the water level to a point where I can move the clay around easily and then we can take it out of the bed. The mucky water from here won't be going back into the system. It will be going down the back to feed the lime bed. So yeah, we're getting a nice bit of water pool just in the middle here. So that's pretty schmicko. Turn this water off because I think we're at level. And I'm going to remove the drain. And just so we have a nice little attachment to uh, run the hose out down to the back of the yard to feed the lime tree. I'll need a screwdriver for that. So I thought we might need a screwdriver for this, but I don't think we do. I don't think I ever zapped one through. So we should be able to, in theory, just twist this out. There we go. And what I have to go in there for now is this little valve assembly. It's just a, something that conveniently fits and will do the job. I can just push that in there. Might have to do it upside down. There we go, yeah, that'll work. And we can use this when it comes time to drain the water, mucky water out of the bed. 
and send it down to the lime tree. So that worked out well. Uh, what I might do is I might start harvesting some of these warrigal greens and putting them in the shade and cutting back some of these plants. And I think the first plant we might take out is this black turmeric. So there we go, that was rather successful. I think I only just cracked a little bit off. Uh, just to show you down here, these little nodules, they aren't actually turmeric. These guys here are said to be energy stores. So when the plant's doing really well, it sticks some extra nutrients down in here, just so when times get a little bit lean, maybe the dry season or whatever, depending on where these are growing, um, they have a little bit of extra nutrient down there. So pretty happy with the way that this has come out. And um, stick them in the black tub for transplant. Now this little specimen here is going to cause a few issues because the roots on lemongrass can get rather invasive. Oh yeah, the root mass goes out a fair way. So we'll give it the old rock first. Oh, there we go, whoops. Cause a bit of an overflow there. Oh, that is one healthy looking root system from the lemongrass. I'm gonna see if I can get this all over in one hit without getting too much muck on me. Don't know how far it goes out of that into the bed. Oh, crikey, it's heavy. Into the tub. So we have those two in there. Now all we need to do is just take out these smaller plants, which I think might fit in a smaller tub. So we'll start off with this small Warrigal Green. We'll try and grab as much root as we can. Won't shake the clay out of that, just to minimize any distress. Another one over here. I'll move this sage over we took out to begin with. The oregano, or oregano. Not too sure if I will worry about this one, but I'll take it anyway for now. And also some of this mushroom herb. Actually um, give it a massive haircut now. Beauty of this stuff is it strikes really easy and it's around the time of year to start striking this stuff. So I could pop some of this in the grow beds. It should take off okay. There we go, don't have to be too gentle with that. And we will get these guys out of the sun. So just to give you folks a bit of a look at what I'm using to remove the media, it's a large neck cup basically. It's something I used as a pump guard in our very first um, barrel system. A couple of zip ties just to cover up a uh, hose hole from where the pump hose went out. And yeah, it's really, really easy. You just basically stir the media around, especially the stuff down the bottom that's got the roots and whatnot, which you can just throw out on the ground. Um, stir that around to dislodge any of the solids that have built up and are uh, just adhering to the uh, media itself. But yeah, just as easy as that. Giving it a bit of a shake and popping it into a bucket. And I know a lot of people are going to say, but we don't have a neck cup that big. What you can do is just get an ice cream container, zap a lot of holes around the bottom, and that'll basically do the same thing. Just make sure if you do use that method that the holes are smaller than the smallest bit of media you have in the system. So this should probably take me about oh, three quarters of an hour to an hour, as long as I don't have any camera malfunctions. And that there is a good look at the roots that clog up the base. So all I do for that is give it a bit of a tap. And it knocks the majority of them out. Nice and easy. So this clay is going into the grow bed over the sump tank in the new system. And any excess will just be held in some blue barrels. And I'll be using the media from the last bed in the old system to top up this bed once it's moved down to the new one. I think I've got most of it done. And I'm just about to drain a little bit from the bed, so I've just attached a hose to there. Just need to flip that there. We should be able to drain the majority of this water out underneath the lime tree, and then I'll just clean up the scraps. So there you go. That's it coming down there. I dare say that the shroud's going to clog up with small bits of roots. So yeah, it's already starting to slow down a little bit. So won't be a complete drain, but enough for me to clean the rest of the media. Now off to take mum to the doctors. 
Just quickly, folks, I did want to remind you about our online backyard aquaponics beginner's guide, 1995 US. There is a link down in the description if you want to suss it out. Basically goes from what is aquaponics, how to make a couple of different components, cycle a system, build your own small system using a recycled IBC, and then loads of information after that about, you know, uh, what plants to put in the system, what's best to start off with, and fish and that sort of thing. So do check it out if you're new to aquaponics and you want a bit of a leg up just to get you cracking. Now back to the build. So folks, it's a new day. And as you can see, there is a lot of muck left in this bed. So just to uh, make things a little bit easier, what I've done is actually jacked up this end here to allow a lot of the water to flow through down to the other end. And what I'm going to do is just use the normal garden hose water um, just to pretty much all wash this out. All this um, soupy muck down the bottom. So we are getting a lot of this grit in the base. Some of that is the rock minerals that I've added in. It hasn't broken down, obviously. The bacteria hasn't been able to make a plant available and use it all up. And the white pits, I dare say, are leftover chunks from the calcium hydroxide we've used to help adjust the pH in the system. So I'm not too concerned about them going into the new system at all. There we go. I think I'm pretty much all gonna call it quits there. So what I'm going to do is remove this fitting. What we've got here is a panning screen inside of a bucket. It's just going to sit there. And hopefully that will catch any clay that comes through. Because I'm about to take out the bulkhead fitting and the clay balls will just run through this and the buckets to stop. Too much of a mess here in this area here. There we go. Hopefully they're not going everywhere outside the little tray. That is one empty grow bed. Sort of, except for some muck on the bottom. But you get the idea. I might just give that a bit of a flush through just to wash that clay down there as well. I would call that one clean grow bed. So I might be able to make out this valve back here. This valve uh, operates this line here. It's the master valve and also the line out to the bed that goes over to the sump. So I'm pretty much all going to be using that fitting there, uh, taking it off here and using it down the back uh, for a couple of bits and pieces. So I'm just removing these water line or this water line. The other one on the sump tank has already been removed. And we'll take the jack down. We'll grab the trough first. Try not to get too wet in the process and take it down. You might be able to work out here, we're going to have a few issues because we have a hose that runs through this bed as well as a drain. So quite obviously I'm going to have to remove them before I can take this frame out. I've also got the power cords as well. So the easiest thing to do, I think, is to turn off the water pump for a start, which I can do at the mains box. I might just turn off the water coming out of the fish tank as well because otherwise it'll flow back down through the pump via the Venturi. And I suppose I can turn that off there. And now I can undo these lines here. I'll just turn the one off to that other grow bed. So what we're basically going to do is just join this line here to this line here. So I just need to go get a fitting to join these two. Best I um, actually take that out from the frame here first. I'm also going to have to disconnect this drain which is covered in roots from yesterday. With, uh, from this bed here as well, which is a section of wire, which I conveniently made a loop on. Well, there you go. Sometimes I do use my noggin. That can go just down there for now. So this hose work is pretty much all disconnected. We'll just tuck him up there out of the way. Now I just need to do the pump line. So the easiest way I know of of moving this is to actually hop inside it. This is pretty much all the easiest way to move the frame. And then for the water line, I used an elbow fitting just to make the join a little bit easier. Turned the pump and the water valves back on and away she goes, down to the other system. So folks, we're just getting cozy down here under the sump tank. And I'm quite lucky in it that this fitting here has enough basically T's. There's a T here that this one hit, uh, extra little bit here used to go out to the dual root zone bathtub. So it's actually going out to the new dual root zone bed here. The riser there um, is the one that went to the sump tank. So it's just going, oh, the bed over the sump tank is going to the same position. 
And this other one here is the one that went to the large bed, which funnily enough, that's where it's going to again. I just had to disconnect it for the time being to be able to get it through the cage here. And hopefully I won't hit the camera on the other side as I feed it through, I might spin it around a bit. And this will need to be connected to this Y fitting once I feed it through here. So this one's just gonna go through here like so and replace the line that I have or that I put on the other day for the dual root zone bed, which won't go to waste because I always recycle these hoses. Just grab the washer before I lose it. And it's as simple as connecting this one onto here. So I'm thinking this one's actually going to have to come through here. Make sure the washer is still in there. It certainly is. Screw him on. You should be able to get water flowing into some of these beds today. So I better get cracking because the sun's going down. Uh, this inlet here I stole from the one that went on the other day on the other side. I just popped it on here. And it's going to sit in the opposite corner this time. And it's going to be held in place up the top with a zip tie just loosely to begin with. And then what I'm going to do is zip tie the hose down the bottom to the subframe. And once that's connected, I'll come back and tighten this up. I just want to make sure I've got loads of room down there and not pull on this end too much at this, for the time being. And this hose here is just going to be held up just to take some of the, uh, the weight off it. There we go. Yeah, pretty much all laughing. So this one here needs to come up, I think. I might try and get it to just come up through the back here. Might be a little bit tricky to do. Probably should have done it first, but we'll see how we go. Come on, little fella. There we go. Not a problem. So just pull this down a bit and that should do the trick. Might just turn the water on. There we go. So I've got a flow going in there. And that one there, I'm just going to zip tie back onto here. Like such. So the one last thing I've really got to do today is just to pop a standpipe in here. Work out which one would be best. That one's a bit too tall. This one. Oh, that one's a bit too tall. We might just have to um, take the reducer off. Pop that in there. Just so we can get a nice level of water in here just to keep the clay nice and hydrated and keep all that bacteria alive. Might actually just get a bell to pop over it as well. So there we go, just the one from the other bed. Pop that over the top. And I might also just level out some of this clay because it is sort of piled up in the middle here. I was hoping to plant the lemongrass into this today but just didn't get around to it. So I will do that in the next couple of days. All going well. So next on the cards is coming back to level out that grow bed, but as you can probably tell, the sun's uh, behind the houses across the road, so I'm going to have to do that another day. So it's bright and early the next morning, folks, and this bed has been flooding and draining all night long. The bell siphon's in there, firing away. And as you can see from down the bottom there, no solids have settled out on the base where that pump had been moved when I plumbed her all up. So there you go, washing the media in the bed works really, really well, uh, a very helpful tip to have. Now, I do have the plants down here. I might pop one or two of these in that aren't looking too happy, uh, just into this bed here to keep them going. And the lemongrass and turmeric, they'll be fine in that little tub down there. I'll just leave some water in the base and they should be all hunky-dory. This bed isn't being set up today because Bianca and I are off bright and early this morning. We're doing a pest inspection on the property we may have made an offer on. Uh, so more of that over on our Bits Out The Back Homestead channel. Probably uh, next weekend we'll have a video on that little adventure. Um, but yeah, I'm very busy today, so we're going to call this video quits here. But next week's video, we'll look at uh, filling up that bed, leveling it out, um, basically finishing off the rest of the system and fingers crossed moving the fish over. So I do hope you are enjoying this little series on the new aquaponics systems build. I have a feeling very soon you'll be uh, watching me move this yet again. 
but yeah i'm um, going to make it bigger and better at a uh, new premises so yeah hit that little subscribe button and jump on the bell icon if you want notifications on when those videos come to this aquaponics channel in the future but i will pretty much all leave it there thank you to all you folks who have been supporting us by buying the guide and also supporting us through the membership platforms that's the youtube one and our farm your own yard one and awesome huge massive thanks to all you folks who do come along every week and thumb up and leave a comment down below to feed mr algorithm we really do appreciate it i'm going to stop nattering on make a coffee and hop in the car i do hope you're all well and happy and your gardens are booming and i'll catch you next week happy growing folks